Hey, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to mess around with building out a MIDI pedal board in Pedal Playground. If you don't know Pedal Playground, it is one of the most fun things to do is to uh, maybe pour a beverage of your choice and play around with building your dream pedal board. It's also an extremely useful tool when you're building out a new pedal board for a new rig. I've recently been really inspired by Philip Carter over at 40 Watt Podcast. Go check him out. He recently posted a photo of his extremely versatile but really condensed three pedal board. And that kind of has made me want to maybe dive into designing a MIDI based pedal board where all of the pedals are MIDI capable and I'm using the functionality of MIDI and expression through MIDI to be able to have a really condensed but really versatile pedal board. So let's start off with the basics. Phillips pedal board consisted of three extremely versatile pedals. So the first one being the Chase Bliss 1978 CXM. So we're just gonna search it in the pedal and then click add pedal. It's gonna load here. And then the next pedal covering really anything that you could think of is the Line 6 HX Effects. And for drives, the Chase Bliss preamp Mark II. So the automaton pedals have been out for a few years. I've played through the reverb. I have not played the preamp Mark II, but they have been so intriguing since they came out. And one of the first things that I thought about when seeing this trio of pedals, well, first off, it fits perfectly. Let's see, what pedal train is it? I believe it is the pedal train Metro 24. And it fits really perfectly on a Metro 24. I don't know if that's, uh, Philip, what you're using, but um, this is an extremely versatile pedal board that you can do wet, dry, wet. You could do wet, dry. Um, you could do everything in mono or you can do everything in stereo. Um, but this is kind of what led me down the inspiration route to kind of building out a MIDI pedal board because all three of these pedals um, can use MIDI to store all these different presets and especially doing expression over MIDI. That's something I've been really interested in and I've been utilizing a lot within the fractal world with my Axe FX and FM3. So kind of the first route that I was thinking, we're gonna move the HX effects to the side, is the CXM 1978, kind of based on a lexicon, that's what it looks like. Um, and it's got all these reverb algorithms in it that are super high quality and reminiscent of the Lexicon reverbs. TC Electronic recently put out the 2290P, which is the 2290 rack delay in a pedal board form. Now with the 2290 delay uh, and the CXM 1978 with the Lexicon reverb, that's kind of like 80s rack tones built in right there. So the first thing I want to explore is you know, let, let's build a rack tone pedal board um, and just kind of play around with what that looks like. I really like utilizing uh, the preamp Mark II as kind of the only drive, because if I add another drive, then that means I'm really not utilizing all the functionality and versatility built into the preamp Mark II, um, where you get it can cover, you know, all of your drive needs. So we're gonna leave that as it is. I think something, you know, that we would need here is if we're talking about a MIDI pedal board is, you know, potentially some of the MIDI controller pedal options. Uh, the first thing for me that comes to mind is I really love the gig rig stuff. So the G3 Atom is a contender. Um, I've had the RJM stuff. And so 
I've had the uh, RJM Mastermind LT, and that's a similar size. Um, I'm pretty familiar and comfortable programming something like that, um, but it doesn't allow you to do things like blend uh, the delay and the reverb uh, in parallel. And that's something that I have been utilizing um, a lot, especially with the fractal stuff. And so, um, you know, with just a standalone MIDI controller, you're not going to get the routing functionality that you might get with, let's say, a uh, PBC 6X. So that's going to give me the functionality. These are, you know, smaller switchers that also um, you can program to do MIDI commands. Another thing um, to think about would be maybe using the parallelizer from Musicom Lab. And that way you can have up to three stereo effects uh, being mixed in parallel um, and with really easy functionality. And that way, um, you know, it's we're not talking about a whole master system here. We're talking about something simple, but it also could be controlled through MIDI. Um, but it is not a MIDI controller on its own. So if we did that, then maybe something like the Morning Star um, MC6 Pro, um, where you've got, um, you know, it's a MIDI controller, and then that way you could program some things. And, you know, we're kind of taking up a little more room now um, than these all-in-one boxes if we're, if we're going separate. Uh, to be honest, to keep everything simple, and because of some of the features, I'm leaning towards the G3 Atom, kind of no matter what. Um, so let's think about some expression pedals. Um, so obviously the Dunlop Volume X Mini comes to mind. Might add a couple of those. Um, you know, one to be able to mix in um, the reverb and delays, and then one as maybe a volume, um, which is really useful for tuning and, you know, maybe swelling into things, but also, um, you know, leaning back. And again, with expression over MIDI, um, it could control things like the mid-range frequency in, in the preamp and give me something like a wall. Uh, another thing that comes to mind is the Laylee. Um, the dual expression, it's a little bit bigger of a pedal, uh, but these things are built um, really strong and this is a dual expression that way um, if I didn't do the expression over MIDI things I could just plug both uh, the 2290p and the CXM 1978 um, just through their expression um, TRS outs into the Laylee. Um, we're gonna move that to the side I'm, I'm thinking about these little ones are so tiny but um, I'm trying to, you know, have as condensed of a board as I possibly can. So we're going to think about, let's move these things up a little bit higher. So what are we missing here? We've got drives covered. We have got delays covered. And the 2290 can do so many cool, unique things um, as far as doing some phasing and some flanging and some chorusing. However, I kind of want to be able to blend in some chorus, maybe some vibrato um, in parallel with the reverb and the delays in parallel. So that's where this HX effects comes back to mind. You know, on all the national boards, you've got um, the, the previous generation of Line 6 stuff. Um, I had the M5 and you've got the M9 you see all on the boards. And this is, you know, the HX is, is just the, the newest generation iteration of something like that. But we're starting to get really bulky here. Um, you know, and this is not really all, f I, I kind of like the theme of everything falling into that 80s um, sound. So let's look for some type of chorus um, and, and that's the cool thing is that you can you can just type in a, a type of pedal now this doesn't mean it's gonna necessarily bring up every chorus pedal that's on pedal playground um, you're searching by the title so if that's in the title 
um, you know, in the name of the pedal, um, you know, if we look at like a, an old school Arion SCH1, um, you know, that's a great Landau type of chorus. Let's see what other options here. Now, you know, we can do a CE1. Um, a CE20 is probably way too big for what we want to do. Um, the CE2 is going to get you, again, it's a, it's a slightly different thing than maybe those, those rat chorus sounds. Okay, we're going to keep looking through here. Now the Eventide Eventide is going to get get me a lot closer um, to that 80s thing. Now, if I'm going to go ahead and do the Tricera Chorus, and we're just on Puddle Playground, uh, where the budget here is, uh, you know, just clicks away, we might as well go for the H90. Obviously, I'm a big fan of the H9. I've got over here in this, you can see in the back, uh, one of my fly pedal boards has three H9s on it. The H90 is super powerful. You've get, basically got two independent H9s, uh, plus some improved upon algorithms in there. So with the H90, Again, there's plenty of incredible delays in the H90. Um, but I think with these four pedals, this could really... Now, they're all top jack except the H90. Now, this is something to keep in mind when you're playing around with Pedal Playground. Once you get into actually putting things on a pedal board, um, you want to make sure that you're leaving enough room for your jacks and for your cables. Um, and knowing things like on the H90, the MIDI is on the left-hand side. It's not on the top. Um, so the MIDI in and out is on the left-hand side, and that means we're going to have to make sure that there's enough room on that left-hand side in between the preamp and the 2290. And see, at this point, we're getting pretty wide. Um, you know, maybe if we if we move things around a little bit, um, this gets us a little a little tighter here. Um, but you know, this is kind of all straight on a theme. Let's take away the the kind of requirement of needing to be um, 80s, because the 2290, very very cool. Um, I don't know that it's going to be the most practical for a small footprint, super versatile pedal board. So let's leave the H90 in there. Let's think about a different independent delay if we wanted to do an independent delay. I think these three on their own would probably do everything that I would ever need. The one thing that I would want to do is be able to do some compression and boosting uh, into the preamp. And the first thing that comes to mind is the Jackson Audio Bloom. We've got an EQ, uh, which is, you know, invaluably useful. We've got compression and we've got a boost that's got a kind of fun uh, bloom effect on there. But right here, this is an incredibly versatile pedal board. And I'm thinking that something, we're gonna get rid of some of this stuff here. I'm thinking that we're gonna move this down here. Probably a vertex. Um, let's see the tour compact. That's gonna get us pretty close. Um, it's a little longer than we need. Let's just see. And here's here's the cool thing about just visualizing this stuff without having to just, you know, pull the trigger on something. Uh, let's go the next size down the travel plus see that's that's a, about the right width but the depth is just never ever gonna work um, yeah the pedals gonna be hanging off it's not something that we want it's really not providing any protection at that point um, so let's go back to the tour compact I really like the idea of having a really tight slim 
pedal board. And the, and the cool thing with the, um, the Vertex stuff, you've got this riser um, and you can move it to the front. We're just gonna line that up about where it's gonna be. And that way we can kind of visualize. Okay, what have we got to, to play around with here? And I like having the, the automatones up at the top, kind of bookending uh, the, the top rack of the pedal board. Um, so we could put that extra expression pedal there. Um, now with the H90, one thing that, unless we did a really specific and committed to a specific routing, um, it, it does not have analog dry through. Um, the same thing with the HX effects. Um, if we're talking about doing things like um, chorus and doing things in parallel, um, where it's important to have that retained dry, if we're gonna do a wet dry, especially like that setup's not gonna work um, without an analog dry through. So let's say we went back to that HX effects. I mean, it, it feels a little honestly redundant to have the bloom here. Um, I think with the HX effects, these three Philip just nailed it on the head. Like those, those three are really all you need. Uh, but just for fun, I, let's play around with some things. So we've got all this room. So let's, let's think about a delay. One of the best, if not the best compact, versatile delay pedals on the market is gonna be the Keeley Halo. Uh, first off, the Halo preset, the Andy Timmons preset is actually magic. And what I really love is having that in parallel with some type of plate reverb. Um, that for me is kind of my, that would be my go-to in the fractal universe. I, I bring up the Aurora delay, which is uh, the Halo and a plate delay and run them in parallel. And that's kind of my go-to wet sounds. Um, and then I blend them in so the, you know, they, they get longer and mixed in um, louder the more I lean into the expression pedal. And then all the way back is, is not completely dry, but is fairly dry. So this would allow me to do that. So now we need to think about, okay, uh, we've got delay, we've got reverb, we've got the boost EQ compression in the bloom. We've got every drive we could ever need uh, in the preamp. So we need some kind of modulation. And if we really wanna make this like a super versatile, um, you know, kinda go-to pedal board, I think having some small amp in a box um, where I could go direct if needed, if an emergency, um, and especially, you know, doing something like a wet, dry, wet, uh, but, you know, only being able to have a small footprint on the stage. So honestly, the one that I think sounds the best as far as the, you know, if, if you're just going really small um, and super stupid proof, easy to get a great sound, all the things, you know, all the controls are on the top. You don't have to go into menu diving. Um, is the Walrus Audio Mako ACS-1. Uh, they recently did an update um, and you can get some better drive sounds out of it. Um, but I think that it would be plenty incredible um, for a backup and even just to be able to, you know, go ampless, um, just having something that is pretty clean on the edge of breakup. And here's something important is you can have different amps and different cabs on the left and right so that there actually is some space. If you're, if you're running the exact same thing left and right, and to be honest, you know, most PAs are mono. So uh, you're kind of, the stereo thing is, is probably for the guitar player's ears and that's usually where it ends. So the thing that I'm seeing that's missing here is a modulation. And I recently, when I was kind of looking into the ACS-1, the M1 seems super versatile and would really allow us to do things before the amp and have reverb and delay after the amp. So after the mic, just like you would when you're tracking something, uh, the same way um, that I would to run things in a fractal unit. 
So we've kind of got space. We, we're probably going to have space under the riser. Um, but to be honest, for a, a grab and go board, having something that's just everything is accessible right there in the front panel probably makes the most sense. Um, and so we have something else. We can we can have a rotating um, uh, slot here, you know, for some kind of unique and really specific effect. Um, and for me, you know, something that's super practical would maybe be something like a Digitech drop pedal. Um, let's see if we've got a drop on here. There we go. Like in a pinch, if, you know, if, if we're talking about, um, you know, having an option to, to not have an amp, um, in those situations, it's also probably, you know, not as convenient to switch guitars. You're probably not going to have a tech. You're probably going to be doing things yourself. Just being able to step on a pedal and, um, you know, drop down, um, you know, to, uh, to a song that's in E flat or a song, um, that's in D, um, you know, the tracking is good enough for something live, uh, but that just gives you even that much more flexibility. Um, I really like the way this board looks and, uh, you know, thinking about it, this could do everything that I would ever need it to do. Um, but here's the question and here's what I kind of came to after um, kind of building this a little bit um, in my free time. Uh, playing around with different pedal options is does all of this actually achieve something much greater than if we took that pedal board away all of these extra things than just this I mean really having these three pedals you know and then maybe an expression off to the side um again that i could you know with the Lely dual expression i can have you know one trs going to the hx effects one going to um the cxm 1978 and within the hx effects i could have a compressor that comes before the preamp and I could run the CXM in parallel to the delays coming out of the HX effects and that way the HX effects is really my patch bay and both of these chase bliss pedals are being uh, put into the effects loops um, essentially of the HX effects it's pretty hard to beat something like that um, this is what I'm mostly leaning towards now Behind me, I've got three or four pedal boards. I don't need another pedal board, um, but it's super fun to kind of dream up the next iteration. And, and you know, when, when I had kind of my one board that I was always rotating stuff out on, um, that was always the thing is I always wanted to try different combinations of stuff, but I usually had to sell a pedal and, or redesign something. Um, there, that way I wasn't able to really play around with like, what does a compact rig look like versus, you know, a, a more full one. And now being in the position to where I can have multiple pedal boards, I think having something as small as this could be extremely convenient. Now I could probably get very similar functionality out of just the FM3, um, and be able to kind of cover all, all the ground, but with less switches, um, this is a little more hands-on approach. And at the end of the day, like the things that I want to, um, physically go down and change are going to be, you know, EQ amount of gain and how wet something is. So being able to like use the fader, um, to bring down the reverb mix level could be really useful. Um, again, you know, with the expression pedal, um, 
that makes that even more convenient. Well, hopefully, if you didn't know about Pedal Playground, that is something uh, that now you can spend all of your time doing, uh, is playing around with different pedal board setups, uh, different routing options, and dreaming up your next pedal board. Uh, maybe some of the pedals in here you would like to see on this channel, or if you think the, the 80s MIDI pedal board is the, is the way to go, or maybe the more full pedal board with the Halo and the Walrus Audio pedals and the Gig Rig. Adam, um, that that would probably maybe suit me better. Um, I really do kind of want to get into the gig rig um, universe of things, and this pedal board might be the, the right way to do that. Uh, but let me know down in the comments below uh, what pedal boards and what ridiculous concoctions you have made on Pedal Board Planner. Until next time, I've been Colin.